So we're talking about bar charts and how to compare categories with different chart types. And in today's video of the One Chart at a Time video series, we have Michael Brenner from Data for Change to help us understand about the diverging bar chart in which maybe the bars aren't sat next to each other or stacked on top of each other, but are radiating outward in different directions. So I'm gonna hand it over to Michael so you can learn more about the diverging bar chart. Hi, John. Thanks so much for having me on today and to take part in the series. I'm really happy to be here with you to talk about diverging bar charts. So uh, the diverging bar chart has a few nicknames, such as the butterfly chart, the tornado chart, or the tornado diagram. Um, there are a few names out there floating, uh, but these seem to be the most common ones. Now, a diverging bar chart is pretty good at showing uh, comparisons between two data sets that share a common variable. Now the data is plotted on an X and Y axis structure, but it diverges from the classic L structure to more of an inverted T structure. The Y axis slides to the middle and your X axis, uh, on your X axis, sorry. Uh, and this is where you start your zero value on the X. So your, your, your zero value starts here in the middle. And from there, you label your X axis uh, on the left and the right hand side to the shared maximum value. That could be 50%, it could be 100%, it could be whatever that shared variable is, the maximum of that uh, unit in your data set. So once you've got your structure set and you start plotting your data, the data is then plotted in A and B uh, categories to compare because that's what you're doing. The diverging bar chart is to compare two different data sets. So uh, then once you've plotted it, you can easily see uh, data set A and data set B. And once they're plotted, I'm sure they'll have some sort of shape like that. And then you'll be able to easily see, because you've got your shared uh, maximum value on the right and to the left, how different they are or how similar they are depending on, uh, depending on the data. But this is definitely the key takeaway for this type of chart is, is that there needs to be the shared variable in the data sets, in the two data sets that you're going to be plotting. So let's take a quick look at some examples and this will be uh, come much more clear. So I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna look at an example uh, here. So this is a chart from a Makeover Monday uh, designed by Gwendolyn Tan. And it's looking at a century of women in the House of Representatives. So we have data set A on the right, which is the Republican Party, and data set B on the left, which is the Democrats. And looking and on our y-axis, we have the various iterations of Congress over time, starting with the 65th um, Congress and going up to uh, the 115th Congress. Um, which just ended in 2019. We've now got the 116th Congress now. And basically we're looking at the representation of women by political party over time. So we can see that over time, Democrats have, in, have had more female or women representation in their party, but there's still a long way to go. We obviously know, and that there needs to be, um, yeah, those, those bars need to, definitely shift out a bit more and there needs to be more equal representation. So this is kind of a classic structure. You can see down here in the, um, can I annotate? No, no, I'm definitely not gonna do that. So down here is in our 0% and then the two, uh, the two, the, the two um, endpoints A and B are at 50% and then we're able to plot the data um, in this chart and make the easy comparison. Now there's another example that I wanna show that doesn't use the classic example. And this is one from the Financial Times that's looking at the UK's gender pay gap and it compares uh, countries against each other. But where this again diverges is, is, is that it's not using the zero point in the X axis, but it's actually using a different value and that's using the OECD average. And from there countries are then compared to this average in how far or away they are, and in this case, away being towards zero so that there's gender parity in, um, in pay and that there's no gender pay gap is obviously better. So when you look at um, South Korea, Estonia, and Japan, they, have, they obviously have some work to do because they have higher percentage points that are away from this average. So it's not to say that you always have to start at zero, but there's other ways that we can use a diverging 
uh, bar chart structure and set that middle part a little bit differently. And we can diverge from a different number, but we just have to be very clear about that structure and label it so that people understand what's happening. So effectively, what you would want to see here in this chart is if, you, if every country was to achieve true uh, gender parity and pay, that all of those would be going on the left-hand side and going to zero. So with that, that's, uh, that's a quick intro and look at uh, diverging bar charts. We have one classic example, and we had one example that played with the format in the structure a little bit and enabled us to use data in a different way. So another quick little recap. So looking at a century of women in the House of Representatives and their representation, and then also looking at how we can manipulate the, the structure of that classic diverging bar chart and use it to uh, explore data in a different way. So with that, thank you so much, John, um, and happy to... Uh, Field any questions or anything that may uh, that may come out, but um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. All right, bye. And Michael, thanks so much for that great review of the diverging bar chart. I'm sure many of you who are watching this series have seen or used diverging bar charts before, but as you can see in Michael's video, there's lots of ways that you can use that particular chart type for your data. So I hope you'll go out and explore it and try to use it some more. So until tomorrow, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks for tuning in.